Welcome back to Film Fanatics. And today we're talking about Porco Russo. This is an anime movie that was released back in 1992. And I was able to see it yesterday in theaters. And I'm going to go through it and I'm going to let you all know right now. This is a mother freaking masterpiece. No cap, no lie. That's really what it was. Usually, I've been going to see a lot of movies lately, and you see a lot of bad movies, see a lot of all right movies, see a lot of okay movies, see a lot of good movies. It's not often that you walk in and you're just gifted with a treat and seeing a motherfucking masterpiece. And that's what we got today. So, in this video, later on, we're going to get into the breakdown, what I thought, pros and cons and everything. But first, I want to go ahead and say thank you to my 11 subscribers. Right now, we got an offense. We need 22 more people for the defense and about a million more to fill out the stadium. So thank you so much to all these subscribers. Thank you all so, so much for future subscribers. And let's get into the video. So basically, what this movie is essentially about is about our character, Marco, who is a runaway Air Force pilot from Italy, turned into essentially a pig. And he's depicted as a pig. And everyone who really knows him does reinforce the idea that he is a pig. But it's really a metaphor for the fact that he is a man that stood on his ideologies and stood against his country, just and you know, ultimately just doing what he wants to do and what that means to society and what that looks like for him. Because we, in following him, we get to see most of his friends and people around him are calling him pigs, but they still respect him. He still makes a lot of money. And the way he makes his money nowadays is being a bounty hunter going against uh, air pirates, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, but just flying. He's an amazing pilot. He's a womanizer. He's just overall this fantastic guy who smokes a lot of cigarettes. He's got a nice big fat gut. He's a fat guy and he gets this thing done. He's a man of conviction. He's a strong man. But like I said, his ideologies and showing who he is and how he stands on it, I think is a really good story. There's so many storylines in this movie where they just beg for you to care and you are invested in every last one of them. Like most movies and most films where they insert a lot of filler scenes, they're just filler and you know, the movie could go without them. But when this movie goes on these little tangents, you just can't help but care and get very emotionally invested in what they got going on in these stories so overall this really you know put me into this frame of anime being a great fit a great way to show us art because you know normally i haven't been in uh anime that much i think i've seen black samurai that's you know typical right but i saw that and that really got me hooked in but you know you know, anime has a bad stigma. You know, there were kids in school running with their arms back. Like, there's a way to run. You know, talking about Naruto and Nagasaki. Like, if you're into all that, you know, it's cool now. You know, ladies will try to say, yeah, I like anime. So y'all can watch anime together. But hey, check this out, bucko. I'm not running in the hallway with you. I'm not running in the streets with you with my arms back or wearing that headband. But I definitely appreciate this art form way, way more with how this movie depicted everything. So when you really dive into this character, you know, who he is and how, the, how he plays out and what his actions really do. Because he's a man who lives on an island who, like I said, he's a womanizer. So women all around him typically fall in love with him because he's a great pilot. He He's he's a true man. Like he's very, he moves with conviction. He does certain things. And I think those are good stories that ultimately film needs to bring back into the mainstream. Just good stories about men and women because there are a lot of jokes and a lot of dialogue about women helping because this is set back in the early 1900s so there was a lot of wartime going on so a lot of the men in countries were all fighting wars so what was left behind were just a couple of older men you know maybe young children and a lot of women and these women were phenomenal because like with the dialogue today if you try to use that in the movie today this movie would bomb because so many demographics of people would not appreciate the tone and how they're being you know, depicted and used, but with the dialogue, the movie shows us 
you know, with the men all being God, these women are very capable and how they approach it because his plane eventually breaks down because he's shot down by this American pilot because he is a wanted man. And he ends up taking it back to Milan, back to Italy, where he gets it fixed by his trusted um, engineers. But all those engineers are all fighting war. So there's only women left behind to design and work on and make the plane. So he's a little skeptical at first, but these women being strong, great women, they didn't have to step up and be girl bosses. They didn't have to be like, well, I'm the bitch, I'm the shit, I'm this, that, and the third. So move over, sucker. And it's like, they show us, yeah, I'm still a woman, but I can still do this damn job. And when it's all said and done, once the plan is done, because they needed so many volunteers to get this done, and mostly women, they all did a phenomenal job. And his plan worked amazing, which is where we get into our another character, which is a lady, forgot her freaking name, but she goes along with Marco and she's the engineer of the plane. So she wants to obviously help and you know, he's being chased for most of the movie. So oftentimes when he's in Milan and Italy, he's found out about by their secret police and he's followed. So he has to take off pretty quickly. So the reason why she joins him is so she can obviously see her work because this is her first time designing a plane and really putting into work. And, you know, with a plane, you know, with a car, you know, you just go on the, that thing and crank it up. And if it turns on, it turns on, if it drives, it drives. But with a plane, you know, that's a little different, you know, trusting your life in the air, the way they depict it, though, it's like these people don't even think about death. They just think about the experiences that they're having, the love that they have for fine planes, the passion that, they, that they've that they all acquired from doing this. And really, the overall plot of this movie is very simple. It's really just the characters and the stories that drive it and all of just how everything is depicted. Because even with these dialogues, even with these couple of things that some people might not you know, find enjoyable in today's world they work so when you're sitting back and it ends you're like i could have saw elite, like four more hours of this movie this shit was a masterpiece so going forward i hope most well i'll be watching way more anime because this was released in 1992 most of you all can see this pretty much anywhere i was able to see it in theaters which was a treat and a packed theater because i'm not big on streaming i get distracted easy so when i go into the theater i have a better mind frame to say okay this is what i'm doing this is what's going on and you know that's what it is but like i said i'll be getting into more of these type of reviews these anime reviews things that you can just go and watch immediately after you watch this or you can get more information on and see it whenever but if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so very, very much. I think the overall message with a film like this is it's okay for you to stand on what you believe in, even though if it may go against your country, all these different things, but you have to understand what this looks like in all ways. Are you prepared for people to look at you as maybe a traitor or a pig or anything that the world can create to call you? Are you prepared for that? And if you are prepared for that, then you can still find a way to have honor in the end of your story, whether or not how that may come or how that may show itself. So once again, thank you so much for staying to this point in the video. I would greatly appreciate it if you left a like, comment, let's have a conversation. Do you want me to go see any other movies? Do you want me to go see any other animes? Do you recommend any that I should see? Because I definitely want to get more into it and seeing more. So definitely leave your recommendations. Let's have a um, conversation and definitely consider leaving a subscribe because if once we get a billion subscribers, we're going to rent out the biggest theater in America. If it doesn't exist, we're going to freaking build it and we're going to see momentum on a 10,000 millimeter screen. Thank you so much for stick, sticking with me to this point. Have a great rest of your day and love yourselves.